G'day, welcome to Eagle Review. Back for another week, so we've done well on the weekend. Haven't just had a victory, we've done it in style. Breaking records left, right and centre. Get a few of these, Rochi India. First quarter, biggest score of all time. Also halftime, full time in a final, eclipsing the 94 grand final for biggest victory with 80 points as well. It was a good day for the club. Uh, we were very good. We kicked the first nine goals and then we went the last nine of 10. So we dominated the game. North didn't get a goal in the first quarter. Um, and it looked like the heat really got to them, I think anyway. And we also kicked third, had 13 different goal kickers. So we did that again in round 22 against Collins. It was very reminiscent of that game, wasn't it? Is that an omen? Who knows? Who knows, mate? Embley, well he doesn't normally handball it, he had Hill outside, he loves the goal Embley, they've done it again, one end of the other. Unfortunately there was a sour note with the victory on Sunday, Vice Captain and Premiership player Bo Waters said to miss the remainder of the final series with a foot injury, just devastating news, was going to miss 8 to 10 weeks so it's quite severe Rochi. Yeah it's shocking news for Bowie and it's just got some good news being voted the most courageous player in the AFL by his peers, so that's a great award to win, congratulations to him there, but did you hear his speech? I heard about it. Oh mate it was sensational, he went on forever, but uh, he thanked everyone, his mum, his dad, his wife, as you do, and then he thanked every single individual player in the room, so what well on Bowie. Look, I failed human bile in year 12, and Roachy, about as intelligent as this pen. So let's hear it from the experts of exactly what's happened at Bo's foot. So it's a bit of an odd injury. Uh, what happened with Bo is as he went to push off from that marking contest, uh, he felt a sudden pain underneath his big toe. He felt like he'd broken his toe, he said, as we got to him. But in fact, what's happened as he's landed and pushed off, he's damaged a small bone underneath the big toe called a sesamoid. He's actually split that in half and uh, he's going in to have some surgery done to have that removed. In better news, the big Q has been given the all clear for this semi-final against Collingwood. Had his tribunal overturned the match review panel of one week suspension for his charge on Scotty McMahon. He's gone in knees first into the marking contest. Hasn't helped him, Rochi. No. But it's all clear now. Uh, he's done well and we've called in the buyer mechanist and he argued that once you leave the ground you can't change direction. Quite intelligent. Yeah, I probably could have told her on that. At least she's still pretty happy about it though. Great result, you know, very confident coming here that we could get it off the charge. Um, you know, my intention was never to uh, charge the player at all and, uh, you know, I believe that was the case and it was a good result. Gee, our forwards were certainly on song on the weekend. Had everyone bobbing up. Jack Darling, we've spoken about him being a big time player. <laughs> no worries. Elimination final, he's come out and kicked four on Michael Ferrito, who is no slouch. Mm. Three in the first quarter, really setting up the victory, Rochi. Yes, yeah, so and fellow forward Josh Hill reckons he knows the secret behind the way Jack plays. He just loves a run and carry. I know he loves his little back rolls and his little cartwheels, so yeah, he, he's a bit of a, I think he uses his ninja things, I think he's a bit of a ninja, so I think he claims he's a black belt or something, so yeah, I think he's all talk, so. <laughs> Great to see big man Josh Kennedy finding some form, good time of year, coming off his injury, he had four, looked very comfortable out there on the ground, but Andrew Embley, really the story of this game, he kicked four goals and had 11 inside 50s, Tom. Oh geez, he was good, and it begs the question, is he our best performed finals player? Impeccable record. Well, he's won a normie. Yeah, absolutely. Andrew Ambley just says it's all part of his plan. Since I've been back in the team every week, I'm sort of building, building towards playing some of the footy I know I can play. So the body's good at the moment and, you know, definitely feeling like I can, um, you know, still have a big impact in this final series. They say that all games are won or lost in the midfield, but wasn't West Coast dominant all day long? It started with Matty Prittis. He had a 29 times, six clearances, stamped his authority on the game early, what I like to see. Daniel Kerr had 28 disposals, 15 of them contested. He was in and under all day, seven clearances. But don't forget Scooter, he's had 28 touches, and he's averaging 30 in the last month, that's sensational. Uh, Shuri had 21 touches, six tackles and a goal. And Gaffey, he's uh, returned to great form with 26 touches himself for seven inside 50. And don't forget your little Masto there. He's yeah. playing quite well. Yeah, he's playing sensational. Hitting the scoreboard well. Look, the media posed the question, was this the best preparation for the midfield and the club, belting a team in elimination final? This is what Kerry had to say. Yeah, I thought our intensity stayed for the whole four quarters. So we got to practice the way we want to play yesterday. We got another game under our belt. We played defensively the way we want to play. And if we play... That type of style against Collingwood, I think, will go really well. 
The West Coast defence looked impenetrable on the weekend. The likes of Darren Glass, fellow Premiership defender Sam Butler seemed in control of it when it was down back. Yeah, look, when McKenzie can play his best footy and he takes their best forward, then Glass he can chop off and be his most damaging. And obviously Butts, he's just all class. He doesn't make it mistakes and uh, uses the ball very well. Mentioning Aaron McKenzie, didn't he have one of his best days on the weekend? He's waited 78 games, but he's finally kicked his first goal. Real sweet and sour memories for Easy this year. I mean, he's, he's had his best memory with his first ever goal, but he got knocked out by the footy in the preseason. So, really mixed emotions for him. I think teammates weren't sure which memory they most preferred. Right, oh, well, they were both pretty awesome. Yeah, I love the goal. The goal was anything. Well, it was me who turned the ball over when Easy got kicked in the face, so my plan worked. So, yeah, Easy getting kicked in the face for the ball. I personally enjoyed his goal more um, because we got to celebrate, and if uh, you watch the celebration again, um, I was pretty happy with it all. So. What kind of stupid question is that? Finally had an excuse to give him a big hug. To quote The Simpsons, Eric's goal had heart. But football in the face had a football in the face. It works on so many levels. Jeez, isn't Adam Selwood having a tough end of the no. season? Mate, he just, no matter where he goes, he's going to get knocked out. He got helplessly pushed over by his brother on national TV a few weeks ago. Then he's been knocked out by his teammates. Not once, but twice. It's strange, isn't it? So we just decide to go right to the source and find out what are the boys' motives. I'll be honest. I had to get him. Somehow I had to keep my spot in the team. And he was the logical choice. I think I got him pretty good. Concussion. Adam Salwood is obsessed with Pokemon. It's gone so far that he's calling players on the field by Pokemon names. Uh, Bunga is Geodude, Lynchy, Snorlax, and I hate what he's given me, Jigglypuff. So I took him out. Magic moment time, which is a fair few to pick from, but I've plucked one out. Shannon Hearn, if you're going to kick a goal from 65 metres every game, I'm probably going to pick you. Didn't mind his barrel he sent in the third quarter as well. Fell mm. metres short of the line. But, gee, some people in the commentary box, they uh, they sat up quite straight. It rolls! It rolls! Oh, I wish it had gone through. I would have got excited. <laughs> oh, shudder to think what that would have entailed. Ooh, Brucey. Anyway, look, my magic moment's when Quinton kicks this great goal here. Uh, Shuey's actually ran around the post and the uh, flags have fallen out and then he didn't know what to do with them. I think he was pretty flat he didn't get the footy and then he's gone, oh, the flag, oh, and then he just gave me a play. I thought he was going to belt Lynch with it though. Well, yeah, he wasn't happy he didn't receive it, but when they kick a goal, who cares? Moving on to the teams, it's a big game, obviously. 5.45 this Saturday, bounce down. Just the one change this week, in comes Matty Rosa after his cracked collarbone. Great to see him back. He comes in for Bow Waters, obviously. Not a positional change, but certainly a like-for-like -like and quality Roche. Oh, sure is. Rose is a great player, but they're calling the middle man these days after his previous operations. He's got that much metal in his body. Don't have to cast your minds back too long ago. Round 22, last play in the Pies. Great 49-point victory here at home, but different story at the MCG, Roche. Not a great record. Yeah, it sure is a different story. Uh, we've lost last 10 out of 11 games there, so look, it's a tough game, but let's hear what Cox had to say about it. You know, finals is a very exciting time. So we'd play in Kent Street or something. We'd go anywhere and play. It's just a matter of who wouldn't want to play at the MCG and the boys get excited about it and hopefully we get the opportunity a few times in September. Also interesting, neither teams have been tagging the last couple of games they've played. Daniel Kerr got a very interesting theory about it. The amount of teams that are uh, tagging as such is, is getting less and less. North Melbourne don't, Hawthorne don't, Collingwood don't. Yeah, I think the, the top teams in the competition, even Sydney to a degree. Match winner time, we've put our heads together, we've come up with this one, the ruck combination. <laughs> we've done it before, but this is a big one against Collingwood. Last time they played, there was no Jolly, it was about 60 hit outs to 12. Mm. But Jolly dominated Nick Nat in that first qualifying final last year. We don't want to give the midfielders first use of the ball. Pretty crucial, our midfielders are in good touch, we want to give them every chance we can, and we also want to wrestle one of these boys down back. They're missing Nick Maxwell, they're going to be a bit stretched for height down there. Yep. Love to see Coxie sit in a goal square for a half. They have a big game and get over the line. Yep, no, good from us. Um, also, I want to mention Nick Nat, he's been nominated for Mark of the Year, and when you take a hanger over two ruckmen, you deserve to take Mark of the Year. Yeah. So, what well on Nick. You're in with a chance. Look, that's about it. We hope to see you next week. Until then, hooroo, till next review.